Hi, this is Frankie Lima, CRNA. I'm the anesthetist for Dr. William. I'm going to be talking a little bit about anesthesia. Basically, what is anesthesia, some major patient concerns, and tips for your day of surgery. So stay tuned. <laughs> So what is anesthesia? Anesthesia from Greek means without sensation. And there are three major components to every anesthetic. A lot of people like to believe that it's one drug that does it all. But actually, we have to look at sedating the patients in order to uh, get them unconscious. We have to think of the analgesia so they will not feel any pain. And also of the paralysis to relax your muscle during the procedure itself. These three components together are what makes general anesthesia possible. There are other types of anesthesia, such as moderate sedation, which a lot of times patients aren't completely asleep. They're just like in a twilight sleep uh, during procedures. And for some certain procedures, that is adequate. Uh, it's very commonly used for colonoscopies, endoscopies, and minor procedures. And there's also local anesthesia, for sometimes you go into a dermatologist's office and he'll inject you with a little bit of lidocaine under your skin in order to remove a mole or something very minor. And there's also regional anesthesia where it will numb up a whole part of your body, most, most likely one of your limbs, such as one of your extremities. All these types of different anesthesia are utilized in different settings. But for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna mostly talk about general anesthesia. So in preparation for general anesthesia, the first thing I do is I check my anesthesia machine and make sure that it's functioning properly. After I check the machine, I prepare the medications that I'll be using throughout the case. And then if everything is okay, I will go ahead and go to speak to the patient in the pre-op evaluation area. There I'll review their chart, make sure that everything is correct and they are cleared for surgery. I'll check their labs and I will also verify all the information that's on the chart with the patient themselves orally. I'll make sure that they haven't had anything to eat or drink in the last eight hours. And then being everything cleared, we'll proceed into the OR. When we get there, I place monitors on the patient to check their blood pressure continuously during the procedure, such as also their heart rate, their oxygen saturation, among other monitors that I'll be using to make sure that you're okay throughout the procedure. After I induce the anesthesia and you become sedated and unconscious, I will be monitoring you throughout the procedure. And at the end, I turn off those anesthesia gases that actually maintain you asleep throughout the whole time. So basically, there's not really a medication that I give to reverse the anesthesia for you to wake up. I just turn off the anesthesia gases that are keeping you asleep throughout the procedure. From there, you will go into the recovery room area where there'll be an RN uh, PACU nurse that I will give report to and make sure that you're okay and you'll stay there for an hour or two uh, or more if necessary until you're ready to be discharged. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about some major patient concerns. So awareness under anesthesia, even though Hollywood portrays it as it being very common, it's actually very rare occurrence. It's more common in cardiac procedures, uh, major trauma, and also in emergency cesarean section. And even though it still uh, has occurrence of one in 1,000, which means a 0.1% chance of that happening. So in, in this setting, it's even less so. So I, I usually tell that to patients and usually that's enough to uh, have them a little bit more comfortable that they're not going to be awake during the anesthesia. We have many monitors that are being used to make sure that you are in a deep plane of anesthesia and that you're completely unconscious throughout the whole time. Uh, another common concern from patients is being having nausea and vomiting in the recovery room. Um, I give medications throughout the procedure in order to actually reduce that chance. And obviously we can give you more medication after the procedure in recovery in case you still have nausea. Another concern is patients saying that they're feeling cold or shivering in the recovery room. And what that is, is, is one is that the OR is a very cold environment and your body's exposed throughout the whole procedure. And another is actually the anesthesia itself. It actually uh, inhibits the thermal regulation in your brain and in your recovery process as you're waking up from anesthesia, your body's trying to set that temperature again. So when you get in recovery, we usually place two or three blankets over you and also a forced air warming device. I also have a warming mat in actually the operating room itself um, in order to try to reduce 
that um, hypothermia associated with the OR environment and the anesthesia. Another concern patients have is that they've had family members or friends tell them that they had a sore throat after surgery. Uh, that's also very common because of the endotracheal tube that is placed in your mouth during the procedure. Well, actually, there's a 50-50% chance that you'll have a sore throat that usually goes away within a few hours uh, or a couple of days. Well, my recommendation is for you to uh, get some lozenges at your local pharmacy and that usually uh, abates a little bit of that um, sore throat. All right, so now we're gonna talk about tips for the day of surgery for anesthesia. So my first tip is that you have at least one finger unobscured from nail polish and relatively short uh, in each hand uh, in order for me to be able to get an adequate reading of your oxygen saturation during the procedure. My next tip is in respect to your hair. Uh, in positioning you in the o operating room, uh, a lot of times women that have a l very long hair, it is difficult for me to position your head appropriately. So if you can make a bun on top of your head instead of the back or using a ponytail, it would make it much easier. Uh, it's also very important that you have nothing by mouth uh, for eight hours before surgery, and that's for your safety and to prevent aspiration. And also that you hydrate very well the day before surgery. That makes finding and securing an IV catheter uh, in your vein much easier and also helps with you flushing out all those drugs and medications that are given to you. Also, you have to take all the medications that you have prescribed the day of surgery, and you can actually do that with a, with a cup, I mean, just a small sip of water. And lastly, it is very common nowadays for women to have artificial lashes. And what happens is that more, more important than the lashes themselves is your eyes. So I have to secure your eyes during the procedure. And I use tape in order to seal your eyes so there's no abrasions or no uh, damage to your cornea during the procedure. So sometimes the lashes will be removed along with the tape at the end of the procedure. So in order to, to prevent that from happening, I just recommend that you do not place artificial lashes the day before surgery. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, just comment down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you very much and I'll see you in season two.